Christ's greetings and grace to you in peace. Amen. Can you believe Christmas is one week away? Wow. A lot of preparations that we have getting ready. Bought all your presents, wrapped them all, done your cards, baked your cookies, all these super preparations. We spend a lot of time every year getting ready for the celebration of our Lord's first coming. I'd like to ask you today, in proportion to our getting ready and all that activity to celebrate our Lord's first coming, how much have you and I have done lately to prepare for our Lord's second coming? That's actually the focus of Jesus' parable that we're going to take a look at today, getting ready for his second advent, his second coming, when he comes on the wings of the wind at the end of the age, with all his mighty angels at the end of the world. A day which I believe is coming very quickly and soon, and we need to be ready for it. So Jesus tells us a story today, a parable, uh, and we're going to look at Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the ten virgins, or sometimes they called the ten maidens. Let's take a look there and see what Jesus, our King, teaches us about being ready for a second coming there in these words. So let's start out by reading it. Matthew chapter 25. Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, Perhaps there will not be enough for us and for you. Go rather to the dealers and buy yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feasts, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other maidens came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is teaching us in this parable about being ready for his second coming. And to do that, he uses a very common image for his day, that of a Jewish wedding and traditions around a wedding. Now, we don't know a lot about weddings and traditions and marriages. I just actually performed a wedding last night, and they had a lot of the traditional things in that wedding. But Jesus is using an image here. You know, we understand weddings and marriages, but... When do we have virgins waiting for a bridegroom? We don't have that. And so we need to understand a little bit more about Jewish customs in Jesus' day, which everybody in his day knew, but we need to learn a little bit about to understand this parable a little better. How did Jewish weddings and uh, marriages go in those days was the man and the woman would start out being betrothed, or we could say engaged. But it was a binding marriage. They were really already married. But they are living separately. Namely, the, the girl will stay with her parents for usually a year in her house. And the man will stay with his father in his father's house. At the end of the year, at the end of the betrothal, the man, the groom, will come to the house of his bride and fetch her from her parents and bring her to his father's house where they'll have the wedding ceremony, the door shut, they go inside, they have the feast, the marriage, later the consummation, and it was marvelous, an amazing uh, ceremony. It could last for seven full days of, of excitement and joy and rejoicing at the, the marriage, the, the wedding. So you say, but where do these virgins fit in? Where do these maidens, these young women, fit in who are waiting for the bridegroom? Well, the tradition for Jewish custom was that when the man went to the house of his bride to fetch her from her parents and bring her to his father's house, where it would be the wedding, on that very night, by the way, uh, these weddings took place in the evening, usually. We have in the morning, they had in the evening. He would go there in the evening, sometime in the night, fetch her, and there were the bride's friends, or we would say bridesmaids today, were waiting, young women were waiting out there to meet the bridegroom, and escort him on the way to the bride's house and thence to the 
marriage and wedding in his father's house. And they would wait there with these oil lamps or torches, and it would be a lit procession. Can't you just picture it? In the evening he comes, they accompany him there and over there to his father's house with this parade of lights. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I wish we had such a beautiful tradition. We have a lot of good ones, but that one's even better. So that's the imagery that Jesus is using here to talk about being ready for the bridegroom's coming. Now in this story, who's the bridegroom? You tell me. Jesus. It's Jesus. For we read there, Jesus, when he was arguing with the uh, Pharisees, the Pharisees were saying, why don't your disciples fast like we do? Jesus says, can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom they, with them, they can't fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in that day. So again, who's the bridegroom in this story? Jesus. Jesus. He's the one who's coming. And what he wants you to know is, will you be ready when he comes? When he comes on the second advent, on the clouds of heaven, at the end of the world. Who are the virgins in this story? Us, right? People who are waiting for the coming of the Lord uh, to accompany Him and to go in with Him to the great feast of heaven. Uh, Jesus uh, says, though, that the virgins here don't know at the time when the bridegroom will come, just like we don't know when Christ will come. But then He says in this, in verse 2, five of them were foolish and five were wise. I want to ask you a question. Are you wise, or are you foolish? Do you think you're the wise one, or, or the foolish one? Which would you rather be? Wise. wise. And which one will you be on the day of our Lord's coming? Will you be found to be wise, or will you be found to be foolish? Which means we need to understand a little more about being wise. Verse 3, Jesus says, For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps, and as the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. What's that tell you about being wise? You are to be prepared, that is, for his coming, even if he takes a long time. Because the wise were prepared, the foolish were prepared. Now, Jesus says here, as the bridegroom was delayed. Do you think he's giving a little hint about his second coming in that verse? That it might be a very long time. How long has it been? 2,000 years or so, you'd think that would be kind of late. Now, these virgins go here in this Jewish custom. Let's say they get there at 7 o'clock. They're expecting to meet the bridegroom and accompany him to the house of the bride and then to his father's house. 7 o'clock comes and goes, no bridegroom. And then 7.30, he doesn't appear. 8 o'clock, they're still waiting. He's not arrived yet. And then 8.30, 9 o'clock, 9.30, 10. And Jesus says, they got drowsy. They began to slumber, and they all fell asleep. 11 o'clock, 11.30 rolls around. Still no sign of the bridegroom. What is Jesus teaching us here about the possibility of when he's returning? It might be a long time. Jesus said the bridegroom was delayed. Do you know that Jesus gives that hint to us in other parables as well? It says there in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14, which is the next verse after our parable. Let's read it. It says, Jesus says, For it will be as when a man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted them his property, to when he gave five talents to another two, to another one. And then it says, Now after, verse 19, Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and to settle accounts with them. What was that word again? After what? A long time. And this uh, one before it, the bridegroom was delayed. In Luke chapter 12, Jesus tells another parable, says, Blessed are those servants whom the master will find awake when he comes. If he comes in the second watch or the third watch and finds them so, blessed are those servants. When he says third watch, do you think that might be a hint? It might be a long time we need to be prepared to wait for his advent 2,000 years, I don't think we have much longer to wait now, but it's still. The thing is, you'll slumber. It's easy to be impatient, to fall asleep, to wander in our thoughts. The question is, will you be wise, though? Will you be foolish? Will you be prepared? Will you be ready, found ready at His coming? That's what Jesus is after today with these verses. 
For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom still was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And Jesus tells us in another place, no one knows. Nobody on earth knows the day or the hour. If someone thinks he knows, he doesn't know. It's only the Father who knows. The angels don't know. Jesus, when he was on earth, he said, even I don't know. The Father only knows that day. But when it comes, and if, it, if I come after a long time, if it seems eons, but I come, will you at that day be found ready or will you be found foolish and unprepared? Peter encourages us with these words. He says, do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. How many days then has it been since Christ was crucified and raised? According to God. Eh, two days. What happens on the third day? Usually that's when God acts. I would say watch out. The Lord is not slow about his promise, says Peter. But he's, but as, as some count slowness, but he's forbearing towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And in the Old Testament, Habakkuk got very impatient. God, when are you going to act? God's answer to him was this. Still, Habakkuk, the vision, the vision awaits its time. It hastens to its end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, he whose soul is not upright in him shall fail, but the righteous shall live by faith. So I want to ask you, it's a late hour. What are we at, 11 o'clock right now, 11.30? When the Lord, it's been a long time since he said he was coming, but will you be found ready and prepared for his coming when he comes? Will he be found to be wise or found foolish? Well, what do we need to do to be ready, to be wise? Let's read the next verse here again. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. With their lamps. What's the difference then between the wise and the foolish? They're all virgins. They all go out to meet the bridegroom. They all have lamps. What's the difference? Oil. Flask of oil. The wise took it with them. The foolish did not. And so the wise were prepared for a long wait. The foolish didn't so prepare. In Jesus' day, the virgins, remember, took these lamps. And they're waiting for the bridegroom. It's 8.30, 9 o'clock, 10, 10.30. How much oil is your lamp going to be able to burn? In those days, didn't have, they didn't have, you know, ever ready batteries. We can plug in our cell phones into the car and recharge them. No, in those days, you've got to bring your flask of oil if you're going to stay lit well into the evening. And so, uh, they needed extra fuel. The wise were careful to take enough to pre prepare for a long wait. The foolish were not. So I want to ask you a question. What's the, what's the lamp in this, in this represent? Jesus is the bridegroom. We're the virgins. What's the lamp? Our faith. Will your lamp be lit when our Lord Jesus returns on that last day? Or will it be extinguished? What is then the oil by which your faith is lit? Hmm? The, word. the Word of God. I would agree. Because I'd go over here. You must have read my sermon, Neil. Over here to Romans chapter 10. Paul says, Faith, watch this, comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes by the Word or the preaching of Christ. How are you going to get strong faith? The Word of God by hearing it. True preaching. So you're in the right place today if you want to be wise. You want to hear the Word preached. And as I'm preaching to you, what are you doing? Your hearts are like flasks where you're getting oil in there. Something for your faith to hear and believe and be strong and be ready for when our Lord comes on the last day. Fuel, oil, lots of it, loads of it. Flasks of oil is what you want. Paul, uh, David says, with regard to the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I've avoided, avoided the ways of the violence. My steps have held fast to thy paths. My feet have not slipped. How did David persevere? By the word. I laid up thy word in my heart that, my sin, my, that my, uh, I might not sin against thee. The word of God we need for oil and prayer. Think about this word that Jesus, I love this, in Luke uh, chapter uh, 21. Jesus says, 
Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a snare, for it will come upon all who dwell upon the face of the whole earth. But watch at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Let me ask you a question. 2,000 years, right? Since Jesus came, is it easy to start to fall asleep? Or maybe easy to sort of wander off and let down your guard and not keep a keen watch? Jesus says that that is a, is a potential problem. You've got to pray. You've got to be in the Word. How many people today are not here in church? They're out doing something else. They're not filling their flasks with oil. May your flasks be filled with oil today. As the song goes, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning till the break of day. We need to be alert, well supplied in our faith, not neglecting to meet together, filling each other with copious amounts of oil, so that even if the Lord waits another thousand years, we'd be found, Lord, I'm here, I'm ready for you. Because Jesus goes on to tell us, you know, if there's no oil, there's no flame. And if there's no word, there's no faith. Will you be found ready when he comes? He says, verse 6, But at midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps. What Jesus teaches here by that verse about his coming? He said before it might be delayed, but when he comes, how fast is he coming? Super fast. He's coming quickly. When he comes, He's coming like a freight train, my friends. Super fast. Listen to this verse. Paul says, The Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, with the sound of the trumpet of God. Can you picture what that will be? What if it were tonight? Would you be ready? Come, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Would you be found ready? Wise or foolish, prepared or unprepared? For the day of the Lord will come like a thief, quick, unexpected. When people say there's peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as travail comes upon a woman with child, and there'll be no escape. Malachi 3 says, Behold, I send my messenger before thy way to prepare before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. To his, to his temple. Suddenly, and... We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. Can you all just blink right now? Just blink. You know, I can't see that far. I'm going to trust you did it. A twinkling of an eye, just like that, like a thief, suddenly, in a moment, on the wings of the wind, 2,000 years, 2,200 years, however long it takes. But when he comes, whoosh, at the archangel's call. And Jesus says, the maidens, when they heard the call, Come, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Behold. They all rose and they, as if from an alarm bell, and they quickly trimmed their lamps. Verse 8. But the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Remember that scene from Indiana Jones when she's thrown into that pit with the snakes? She's got that little torch with her. Indy, the lamp is going out. I always think of that. <laughs> what if that were the case when the Lord comes? And you're not prepared, and your torch is there, and you have no oil for it. The lamp, it's going out. It's extinguishing. Here he comes. And then they cried to the wise, give us some of your oil. But the wise replied, perhaps there'll not be enough for us and for you. Go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. Now was that, was that selfish or mean for the wise to do that? Not give their oil? Guess what? That was wise, because if they gave their oil to the foolish, there might not be enough for both. They said, go rather to the dealers and buy. And while they went to buy, Jesus says, the bridegroom came. In other words, many, Jesus says, will be taken by surprise by that day of my coming. And notice, the wise said, go and buy for yourselves, which teaches us, you can't be saved by somebody else's faith. You're saved by your own faith. We can help each other, but it's your faith by which you're saved. You can't say, give me some of your faith on that day. It's your faith by which you're saved. You need flasks of oil today. And you go to the dealers to buy, they say. But will they find a dealer open on that day? 
Who is the dealer of oil? One of them you're looking at right now, right? A preacher who's going to give you this book, these words, giving you the word of God, that's oil for your heart. And you're in the right place today to receive it. But will there be any stores open on the day when Jesus comes? A place to find and deal and buy oil. You know, many people today, and praise be to God you're here, but many people are not in this church today. They pass by and say, oh, that obscure little pastor, that obscure little church, it's boring, it's insignificant, it's dull, it's not as exciting as the rest of my life, it's not relevant, I'd rather be sleeping, or fishing, or skydiving, anything but that boring place. But on that day, when the alarm call comes, of the archangel, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And they run. And they would wish for one day at this church. One hour. One voice. One sentence. One word. One syllable of grace in Christ. That Christ came to, and died for sinners to give us eternal salvation as a gift to be received by faith. And they'll look for that word. But on that day, the dealer's shops will be closed. Because... The church will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And the stores will be closed. The Bible teaches, therefore, today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. You don't know if you have a tomorrow. The shops are open today. Deal and buy your oil today. Come here. And that's what I'm here to give you. And we're to give each other oil, fuel for faith, the word of God, and fellowship, and such. And Jesus then says... And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. The period of grace at that point is over. Verse 11. And afterward the other maidens came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us, open to us. But he replied, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. And on that day the Lord teaches us there's no more time to choose. There's no more time to repent. There's no more time to believe on that day. The period of grace is ended. It is ended. No more time to follow. The time will be at hand. As Jesus says in another place, Therefore strive to enter the narrow door. For I tell you, many will seek to enter and will not be able. For when once the whole householder has risen up and shut the door, you'll begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, open to us, open to us. He'll answer, I do not know where you come from. You know, how many people are out there in the world today not interested in church, don't want the shop, don't want the oil, don't want the word. They're going to want it on that day and will not find it. But the wise are those who take the flasks of oil, who come and hear the word and are diligent in each other and in prayer. And therefore you have such an amazing amount of oil, copious amount that you can wait another thousand years and you'd be ready at the time of His coming. On that day, well, right today, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him and eat with him and he with me. But if on that day, today, when he knocks and your door is not open and he does not, you do not allow him in, but shut him out. On the day when he comes and goes into heaven and shuts the door, he'll shut you out. For that's a really solemn thing, isn't it? Jesus says here in this verse, When the door to heaven is shut, it's shut and shut forever. Right now it's open. Open for all. Come, all you who come and believe, take it without money, without money, without price. But when once the door is shut, it's closed and the time of grace is over. As it says in not scripture but in school, the exam is over, put down your pencils, no more writing. Remember that? The day of grace is ended. And the wick of the wicked will not be lit on that day. But the lights of the righteous shall shine, and they shall enter the city by the gates, the wedding feast, and by, they will enter by the door with the bridegroom. And Jesus concludes the whole parable with these words. Watch, therefore, be ready, be alert, we, for you know neither the day nor the hour. So what do you think? There's the parable. Or at the conclusion of it, will you be ready? <coughs> Wise or foolish? Found alert and ready with a copious supply of oil, of oil in your flasks or not. It's God's word. It's preaching. It's each other. It's prayer. It's fellowship. 
and that we might enter with him. And I'll give you the good word right now. You ready for your flask? You get it open? God so loved you. God so loved the world. He gave his son that you, believing on him, should not perish, but have eternal life. He died for your sins. He rose again from the dead and gives you eternal life as a gift of his grace received by faith. That's oil, my friends. And then it wouldn't be fitting to conclude this sermon without one more word, which is, what's it going to be like behind that door, that shut, when those who are wise enter with the bridegroom into the chamber, into the house of the Father? Behind that door, you will meet the joy of the King forever, alone with the Lord and all the saints, in a new heavens, in a new earth in which righteousness dwells, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall crown their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away in the party of the bridegroom and the bride. Where there shall no more be anything accursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. Servants shall worship Him. They shall see His face. His name shall be on their foreheads. Night shall be no more. They need no light of lamp or sun. For the Lord God shall be their light. And they shall reign forever and ever. In Jesus' name.